One of the useful ways to describe trees or woodlands is by size class. And uh, the smallest size class are, are seedlings. And we're here in a stand that has recently been uh, clear cut. And what's come up is, is seedlings. And in some cases, we do have some, some sprouts here, but all of them are small. And you can look down here and you can see this, this seedling right here. Seedlings are defined as any tree uh, that's smaller than about one inch in diameter. So all of this are considered seedlings and this stand and the trees in it would be, be considered a seedling size stand uh, and the trees in it are, all, are seedling size. And that helps us being able to describe that because then we can talk later on about management and what you would do in a stand of, of this size. We're in a stand right now that has recently been harvested. It was, it was cut two years ago and it was uh, cut hard enough to initiate or start a new batch of trees or a new age class. And that's what I'm standing in now. And there's some, some blackberry that you see leaved out here, which is very common uh, in, in young stands like this, but there's over 10,000 small tree seedlings in here as well. And I've got one here in my hand. This is a yellow poplar or tulip poplar that originated from seed and it's growing quite well. Um, and this is one of the trees that we're gonna count on to be uh, the next uh, dominant tree and saw timber size tree in this stand. And there are a number of them all the way through here. And if you pan uh, across this stand, you'll see uh, a number of trees that have been left standing after the harvest. And we'll talk about those here in a minute and determine whether this is a good thing or a bad thing to have happen. Now the reason they were left is because a lot of them uh, weren't merchantable. They were crooked, um, they might be leaning, they might have been a, a poor species that wasn't merchantable. Um, various reasons why they were left. And one question becomes is, do these trees that are left, are they going to have any impact or slow down or reduce the height growth of our, our new age class of seedlings that are regenerating here? We're getting enough sunlight in now to start that regeneration process. However, uh, the trees that are left after they leaf out, of course, and after they start to grow, may very well start to, to stop the growth of our regenerating uh, age class here. And a good example of that are the two trees, small pole-sized trees directly behind me. And you can see that they're, that they're uh, crooked, they're leaning, they're still alive. And leaving those trees there um, is probably a bad thing. They'll restrict the growth and development of, of the trees in a stand. And foresters will make a determination uh, of, of whether there's too many trees standing here or not um, and which ones need to be removed. And so one of, the, one of the practices that we use in a stand like this is something called site preparation or site prep for natural regeneration, which is, in this case, removing the trees that are of poor quality that are going to, at one point in time, start to slow the development of our regenerating age class and start to hurt those, in this case, those young yellow poplars that we were just looking at. And so we can remove some of that. We can take those trees out of there. Now it won't be merchantable. We'll have to go in there and deaden those trees, kill them out, girdle them, use herbicides, a number of different ways of doing that, remove them from the stand uh, to allow for the regeneration and the rapid regeneration development of this young age class. And uh, we're gonna go take a look at, at a stand that we did that exact operation in or that practice in and you'll be able to contrast uh, the growth and development of that regeneration compared to this stand here. As we mentioned a minute ago, one of the practices that could be done uh, right after there's been a regeneration harvest is a site prep that, of course, removes all the unwanted trees uh, out of the stand. And that's what we've got a picture here of. Uh, this stand is, uh, was cut four years ago and we did a site preparation a treatment on it where we removed all the unwanted uh, trees, broken off trees, unwanted species from it. And all we're left with is the young regenerating, in this case, hardwoods. And these hardwoods now have uh, nothing above them to hinder their growth. That's gonna allow them to uh, maintain their height growth, 
uh, over their lifetime and the site prep practice allows uh, this condition to exist so that we get good long-term growth of this regenerating age class. Well, moving up from the seedling size class is the sapling size class. And saplings are normally uh, described as being from one inch in diameter to six. And the stand that we have here is a sapling size stand. And you can see the, the trees that I've got here are certainly below the six inch diameter and above the one inch. And this stand is 18 years old. It's a regenerating stand and it's full of seedling, uh, a few seedlings and mostly sapling uh, size class trees. And this is the first size class that we would normally get into and do any work in this stand. We're in a 20 year old uh, clear cut and the trees that are in here are sapling size trees and um, they're 30, 40 foot tall and this is about the first time where you'd feel comfortable coming in and doing a treatment, a management treatment, to try to improve the growth of this stand. And commonly a treatment that's done at this time is called a release or a thinning. And so the way that works is we look at the stand here and we pick out a tree that we wanted to call a crop tree, a tree that we wanted to maintain its growth and make sure it's got plenty of room to continue diameter growth and, and, and height growth. And so if we look through here, we'll take, uh, take this tree for example. This is a, this is a chestnut oak. Um, it's preferred species on this site, uh, fairly straight. And if we look up it though, it's a, it's a chestnut oak, it's nice and straight. But if we look up this tree, we'll see that the crown, I'll shake it so you can see it well, but the crown of this tree is very small very small and, it, and the reason it's small is it has competitors um, that are restricting the development of its crown. So let's look back down here and uh, select the trees that need to be removed uh, so that this chestnut oak can increase its diameter. And if we look around here, we'll see that we've got a, a sprout clump of maple and, uh, and it's been sprayed blue because these are gonna be treated uh, to improve the growing space that our chestnut oak tree has. And there's a maple sprout clump on the other side as well and we'll remove it. And that will provide increased growing space for this tree. Uh, it'll put diameter growth on in response to that. And this is a great treatment, this release treatment to do at a stand that's at this stage of development. Well, let's go over uh, into the stand right adjacent to us and we'll have a look at what that treatment looks like after it's been done. Well, the stand we've got over here is uh, the same age as the stand we were just in. And this stand though was treated uh, about 10 years ago. And we did a release treatment here where we, we selected individual trees that were the right species and had the right, right form to them. And uh, we released them, gave them more growing space. And this is a result of that. And you can see here, this is a white oak that's right here. Um, a really nice preferred species on this site. You can see the diameter growth on it. And the reason this tree has a diameter growth uh, is because it, we did the release around it, giving it more growing space. Now, if we look up this tree, what we'll see is, and if, if you can pan all the way up there, and you can see the large crown that's on this tree. And this tree had that increased growing space. Um, it increased its crown width, put more leaves on, and it started to grow in diameter. Now it's got a fork in it, which will restrict the height of the, of the main stem logs in this tree. But in this case, in this stand, having a really high quality uh, bottom log on this white oak can provide us a significant amount of money. And that big crown on this tree keeps us in, in, a, in a good growing uh, condition. Uh, and this diameter growth is gonna keep on for a number of years. So the next largest size class after the pole size trees, which are six to 10 inches in diameter, is, is saw timber size trees. In this case, a small saw timber stand, of roughly 11 to 16 inches in diameter. And uh, we've got an example of that here. And this particular tree is about 13 and a half inches in diameter. So this would be considered small saw timber. And we've got another tree over here that's about the same size 
And this is a size stand here that you would start to consider being able to do a commercial uh, harvest in. So if we're going to do a, a silvicultural treatment or a management treatment uh, involving a commercial harvest, uh, stands of this size and, and larger would, would be considered uh, big enough uh, in many places to be able to use a timber harvest to implement the treatment. Well, we're walking through a woods here uh, that has a lot of trees that are 16 to 20 inches in size. And we typically consider this a medium size saw timber stand. And I'll measure this tree here. And so we've got right at 18 inches in diameter for this tree. Now, when, when the woods uh, is full of trees this size, uh, there's a number of things that can be considered. Uh, now, from a logging standpoint, a logger could harvest this tree. It's large enough uh, for that to occur. However, uh, stands that have these size trees in them, you have to realize that they also have a lot, in some cases, they have a lot of growth potential left in them. And a forester can help make a decision on whether trees of this size need to be kept in the woods uh, and continue to grow, and so they get larger and more value, or maybe they're ready to harvest. Um, a woods of this size here could be thinned uh, if that was needed uh, to reduce the density of the woods, uh, allowing more room for the remaining trees to grow. And so some of those trees would be taken out of those woods and it could be a commercial harvest. So this is a point in time where the stands or your woods is large enough to consider uh, a commercial harvest. However, uh, oftentimes stands of this size, a number of trees should be left to remain to grow, get bigger and increase in value over time. Well, here we are in a, what we call a large saw timber size stand. And, and typically that means the trees are usually 20 to 24 inches in diameter. We're gonna, we're gonna check the diameter of this tree, this white oak I'm at right here, and it's 21 and a half inches in diameter. And so this is the size uh, of, a, of trees in the woods where you really need to consider what's gonna happen next. We'll walk over here and, and take an, another look at a tree in this stand. <clears throat> here we've got a red oak. And of course, it's, it's larger in diameter. And so when trees get this size, um, the, the woodland owner needs to start thinking about several different options. Uh, obviously, uh, you gotta consider the age of these trees. Uh, they may, may very well be to an age where they're gonna start to die on their own. Some of our species, when they get this size, um, can do that. And so you'll start to get natural mortality occurring. Um, so you've gotta think about that and consider that. All, obviously, you're at a point here where you can harvest these trees. They have merchantable value in them and volume in them, and, and that needs to be taken into consideration. So when you're dealing with a woods that has their dominator, has a lot of these size trees in it, uh, your options can be uh, uh, harvest to, to think about um, getting the value out of the woods, but before you do that, you really have to be considering what's gonna happen after that harvest. And here as a forester, is very important to have um, uh, and be in discussions with and have them involved in the planning. Because when you start harvesting a woods this size, the trees in it that are this size, you, you have to consider uh, how the woods is gonna regenerate. And that's not done in a haphazard fashion. And there's good decisions that have to be made. It's not simply just doing a timber harvest, but actually managing the woods and the older trees like this and larger diameter trees like this and manage this in a proper way so the woods will continue to provide you good value in the future and sustainability. So ultimately, uh, for a lot of people, the trees of this size have value to them either just because they're large and potentially you may wanna grow old growth and, it, and if the species are long lived, that's certainly a possibility. They may not be, but a forester can help you with that. Same way with the harvest. Um, it is very doable in here from an economic standpoint, but you wanna make sure that you're doing it right. So stands like these, we're obviously excited about, about walking through. We're, we're excited about owning them, but there's a lot of options that need to be considered at this time.